What's up, YouTubers? I'm really bad at going live, especially now with one hand, so just bear with me. Oh my god. Okay, that's a little better. I'm gonna wait a couple seconds to see if anybody else is gonna join our live stream, and then I'm gonna talk to you guys about what the heck is going on around here. Because a lot is happening. And it's not in a great way. But I am here at Smoky Row. It's a coffee house in Oskaloosa, Iowa. Oh my God. Jesus. Everything stinks when you're one-handed. Um, I am in Oskaloosa, Iowa. I am at Smoky Row, which is a coffee shop here in Oskaloosa. It's really, really cool and fun, and it has really good Wi-Fi. So that is why we're going live here and not back at the tiny house. I feel a little bit bad that we're not going to be able to see Crusher right now, but, um, you know, we got to be where there's good Wi-Fi. So I'll get started. Look at that. Look at that. Ugh, come on. Ew. Hi, Gray. Um, this is a problem. This is a big problem. I don't like it. I'm not into it. This is not cool. It's not fun. I'm going to try my best not to curse, Gray, okay? I'm going to try my very hardest. Um, so, <laughs> I am in Oskaloosa, like I said. And I have been here for the past month, I'd say. Um, basically, I went to the um, Tiny Fest Midwest in Colfax, Iowa. And when I was there, I met this woman named Renee, who is very, very sweet. And she ran the event. And she said, hey, I've been following your travels. And I see that you've been going like crazy. Where's your next stop? I said, Texas, but I don't have to be there until the end of the month. And she said, oh, well, why don't you come stay on my farm while you're, while you, you know, have time so you can, like, relax for a little bit. And I was like, oh, my God, that sounds amazing. So I basically moved my house an hour southeast to Oskaloosa, and it is a farm. Basically, it's um, her mom's farm, which is a horse farm, her tiny house, her brother's farm, which is, like, an animal farm, and then my tiny house. So it's like this huge, huge lot with just animals and corn and amazing people. And I've been here for a month. It's crazy. I can't believe that this is my life right now that I was able to just stop and live here in Iowa. And that's like part of the, part of the dream. It's not sketchy. It's really, really cool. And, um, <laughs> and so, yeah, it's, it's gonna, it's really fun. It's, it's been cool being here. It's, it's a very boring place, Iowa. It's, a uh, pretty boring. There's not really much to do. So we pretty much covered everything that there was to possibly do in Iowa in like the first week. We went to um, the American Gothic house, which is really cool, like that painting, American Gothic. Um, we went to the house that it was photographed and painted at, which was cool. Um, we went to Omaha, Nebraska for an overnight trip. Um, we've seen tons of farms. We went on a farm crawl because that's what you do in Iowa. You go on a farm and go to different farms and just are on a farm crawl. That's what you do. And I've met really cool people, and yeah. So, all is well. Renee left to go to California for a while, and then we were gonna meet up at the Texas um, Tiny House Jamboree, which is actually this upcoming weekend, um, in Arlington, Texas. And it was gonna be really fun. I was really excited about it. Um, well, I was just a little bit excited about it because I was supposedly going to present there as a house, you know, like you come look at my house, like I have done at every festival I've been at until, um, so they were asking me for money 
And I was like, I'm not paying $1,500 to come show my tiny house. Like, give me a break. And they're like, well, that's what everybody pays. And I'm like, but that doesn't make any sense, and I'm not going to pay that. And finally, he was like, well, all, all builders have to pay that. All commercial builders have to pay that money. I'm like, but I'm not a commercial builder. I'm a tiny house DIYer. Duh. You, f you say you follow my social media. You know what I'm talking about. And he was just like, well, no, you said you were a commercial builder. And I was like, uh, no, I'm not. So basically, I had to argue with him and be like, well, I'm not paying that. And he's like, well, our DIY village is full, so you're not going to be able to, to be there then anyway. I'm like, whatever. So I was just going to go as a guest. <laughs> I love your comments, Gray. You're so funny. Um, so I was just going to go as a guest. And then I fell off my stairs. And that wasn't fun. So here's the story. So it was Saturday night a week ago. So like last, last Saturday night. And uh, I was, it was, no, okay, so I guess it was in the morning because it's 4.47 a.m. Crusher, my sweet little baby pig, always sleeps with me. And she... Um, we've had a couple of close calls in the loft, you know, the first couple of times she was on there, I was like a little worried she was going to fall off, but she never did. So I was like, okay, well, we're pretty good. Um, there was one time when I heard her hooves on the flooring when I was like, I woke up to hearing her hooves on the flooring and I was like, oh my God, she fell. She fell. How did I not hear her fall? Why is she on the floor? And there's like a tiny four inch ledge between the end of my bed and the end of the loft. And she was like, just walking on like a balance beam. Hi. And, uh, hi, Ashley. And so, thank goodness she didn't fall. So I, like, scooped up carefully and, like, picked her up and got her out of the, uh, got her off of that ledge. And then she always sleeps next to me, so it hasn't been a big deal. And then another time, I have, like, a big comforter, and it's, like, a, like a duvet over a down comforter. And... Sometimes she, like, weasels her way in between the duvet and the comforter itself. So she's, like, in a pocket because she likes to be warm. And sometimes I'll wake up to her being in that and I have to, like, fish her out of there. Right? So one night I heard her. I woke up to her talking because she oinks a lot. And uh, who is this, Ashley? <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> um, so I wake up to her oinking because she's always talking. She's just constantly talking. I have to put more videos up of her because she's constantly talking and she um I could hear her talking and I was like where are you I I don't you're not next to me I hear you talking it sounds like you're far away so I'm like looking off the edge of the loft and I thought she was maybe on the couch and I didn't see her and I was like oh my god where is this pig turns out she was in that pocket dangling off the edge of the loft and I had to like fish her up and I was like okay this is the problem like this is a major problem but like that was like two times other than that she's always been fine on the loft until 4.47 a.m. I woke up because I heard her talking and then I heard her fall and I heard a thud and I freaked out and I like get my glasses on. I whip down the stairs as fast as possible. I'm like, oh my God, she's dead. I'm like freaking out. And then she's like walking around down there like totally fine. Just like murk, 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 And I'm like, you're not busted. You're not hurt. How are you not hurt? And she was just like fine. She was just walking around. And I don't understand how that happened, but anyway. So she was fine. I just had her sleep downstairs the rest of the night or the rest of the morning because I was like, I'm not going to chance it again. And then that night I put chicken wire up in the loft so she can't fall out. Everything's fine. Cool. So Crusher is a beast. She totally is a beast. She's really funny. I can't wait for you to meet her, Gray. She's so cute. You're going to love her. She just snuggles all the time. That's all she does is snuggle. So, um... So then it was, so that was Saturday night into Sunday morning. And then I guess it was, Tuesday. Okay, so I had really bad neck pain starting from the week before, like really bad neck pain. And so I finally decided then on that Monday, no, on Tuesday that I was going to go to, um, <laughs> okay, let me just sidetrack with that really quick, Ray. Crusher is like, honestly really protective over me and like she's bit other dogs because she's worried that the dogs are like gonna come near me so she's like a little aggressive so 
We have to just test her around raisin bean. We're not really sure what's going to happen there. <laughs> anyway, that remains to be seen. Um, but... <laughs> Oh, man. So, so I had really bad neck pain, so I went to the chiropractor on Tuesday, right? Cool, whatever. He adjusted me, whatever. I just found, like, a local guy. And then they did my blood pressure, and it was super-duper high. And they were like, this is not okay. You can't have a blood pressure this high. And I was like, I don't – I feel fine. Like, I don't feel bad. I just am in pain, so maybe that's what it is. But they took it a couple times. They let me, like, sleep it off for a little bit there. But they were like, we can't let you leave. You know, you need to go to the hospital. Your, your blood pressure is so high. So they wouldn't even let me drive myself to the hospital. They were going to call an ambulance. And I was like, we're not going to do that. So I had, um, first of all, I can't afford health insurance here as it is already. I'm not going to also try and afford an ambulance. It's crazy. So um, I had... The, um, the family I'm staying with on the farm, they came and picked me up, take me to the hospital. And I guess when they did my blood pressure there, I think the highest it got was 184 over 114, which is heart attack. Like, that's heart attack level. Like, you should be dead. So I was like, that's, oh, my God. That's heart attack when your phone drops. Jesus. Okay, so they were like, you could, you're basically going to have a heart attack, so you should um, go to the hospital, right? So then I went, and then I kept taking it, and uh, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> I literally broke my other camera, too, before from that, too. So just as a PS, I don't know how to not break my phone or my camera from dropping it. Um, so I went to the hospital. They took my blood pressure a bunch of times. A couple hours went by, and they're like, okay, well, it's the bottom number's under 100 now, and um, we can let you go home. So then I had to get a ride to, back to my truck and then back home. And, uh, okay, whatever, totally fine, not a big deal. I was like, that's a little concerning, but, you know, whatever. So then I went home, went to bed, woke up in the morning, and I'm carrying Crusher. So here's what happens. You have to, like, start coming down the loft backwards right? And you, and like, I have to grab her immediately because she doesn't like coming down, scares her. So I have her in my left hand and I'm using my right hand to like get my body on the stairs, right? So I get on the first step and I get my feet down on the second step. And then usually what I did, usually what I do is I put Crusher in my right hand, I hold on with my left hand, get down a few steps, switch hands and get down that way. I chose not to do that. Why? I don't know. I thought, hmm, if I hold on with my right hand, I'll probably have a better, I won't fall as easy. So I hold her in my left hand. I'm holding the stairs in my right hand. I step down from my second step, miss the step, fall backwards, fall into the heater, into the table, onto my elbow. So I'm holding her, and I land on my elbow. Thankfully, she's all right. Don't worry. She's fine. Um, but I, like... It was bad. <laughs> I don't even know what that means. <laughs> but anyway, it's like 8 o'clock in the morning. Like, it's so early. And, like, nobody's around. I don't have my phone next to me. Like, I fell. I'm holding my pig, and I'm just, like, on the floor, like, just, like, your breath gets taken out of you. So you're just like, oh, my God, oh, my God. And my hands, my fingers hurt so bad. My elbows hurt. My elbow hurt. And my fingers hurt. And I was just like, I don't know. Like, something's wrong. I was crying because I didn't feel good. And, uh, and then I looked down at my fingers, and they were, they were messed up. They were, like, bent, and I was like, ooh, I think I broke it. So I called my mom, and I was like, I think I need to go to the emergency room. I'm like, I feel really stupid since I was just there yesterday, but I better go back. So, I like, I, get, I take a shower and go to the ER I know. That's what I'm saying. It was a disaster. So I take a shower. I get myself to the, to the ER. And I'm just, like, in so much pain because my fingers are so gnarled up and twisted. Like, like, the middle finger was, like, like, my fingers aren't exactly straight. They're a little funny. But it was, like, twisted all the way. It was bad. And, 
And so they did x-rays. Well, they were going to do x-rays. And they were, like, spreading. They were, like, put my hand on the, on the uh, mat or whatever to x-ray it. And they're like, okay, let's turn it to the side, and we're just going to move your other fingers like this so we can get it. You know, we can just see your middle finger. And they start moving my ring finger. And I was like, um, no, I'm not really sure that that's not broken. Like, ow, that really hurts now. Like, ouch, ouch, ouch. So they did x-rays, and then I go back in the room, and they're like, yeah, you broke both your fingers. Both of them are broken. I was like, I've never broken a bone ever in my life. And I had to here in Iowa. What the hell? So mad. So I... So they, like, splinted it up, and they're like... Zero. Zero things have broken, and my house was fine. My house didn't break at all. Only my body and only my fingers. And, like, you would think that, like, by falling that much that I would have broken more. But no, just my fingers. So weird. So weird. But uh, so then they were like, well, we have to hook you up with an orthopedic surgeon ASAP because um, it was a spiral fracture on my middle finger, like, there. And then this one has a big fracture in the middle here so with this one since it was all spiraled and gnarled they were like you got to probably get surgery on that one I was like are you kidding me like no this cannot be um they're like okay we have an appointment for you tomorrow just go home don't do anything we'll split it up whatever so I went home and uh it really hurt it was huge it got like really big overnight too like really fat and it was just, like, really hard to sleep because everything hurt. And I was trying to keep it, like, you know, iced or whatever. And then uh, when I woke up in the morning, it was really, really big. And, and they had given me these pain meds at the ER. They were like, you know, we're going to give you pain meds because, you know, you're in pain. And we got to reduce the inflammation. And I was like, let me just save you a trip here, guys. Like, if you're going to vi- prescribe me Vicodin or Percocet, those don't work. The only things that work for me are the heavy stuff. And I know you're not going to prescribe them. So, you know, save your breath. Just don't prescribe anything then. They're like, all right, have you tried tramadol? And I was like, no, actually, I haven't. Let's try that. So it, the pain, was, it, it definitely helped. I mean, my neck was still messed up, but and the, it definitely, the medicine definitely helped. And then when I woke up the next day, I felt really funny, and I just didn't feel good, but I was like, I've got to get to the doctor. So I, like, get in the car, get to the doctor, and, like, so true just bandage me up just like the Native Americans that would have been fine right (laughs) so I uh, what's IKR what does that mean (laughs) what is with them that's my question Oh, I know, right, okay, yeah. Yeah, IKR. <laughs> so I, um, I like, made it to the gas station on my way to the doctor, and I, like, got out of the car, and I was like, I'm going to throw up. Like, I don't feel good. I couldn't keep my eyes straight. And I was like, oh. it was a bad choice to drive, for sure, because I was not feeling good. But, like, I had to go to the doctor's appointment all the way in Des Moines, which is, like, It was actually West Des Moines, which is about an hour, 15, hour and a half away from Oskaloosa. And uh, to be able to get there, nobody was going to drive me. How was I going to get there? You know, everybody's busy. I can't ask somebody to drive me an hour and a half, right? So I was just like, I got to get in the car and just got to go. So I talked to my mom on the phone most of the way. I was like, I don't feel good. She's like trying to talk to me about like what she's having for dinner. I was like, no, you can't talk to me about food. (laughs) Right, mom? Oh, I was so sick. So then I get to the, I went to the wrong place first and I'm like shaking and they were like, Oh, you're very far from where you need to be. Are you going to be okay? I was like, yeah, just get me there. I just got to get there. (laughs) And so I get there. They don't have Ubers in Iowa. Can you believe that? Where I am in Oskaloosa, it's so, it's so, um, not populated that they don't, like, they have Ubers in Des Moines, but, like, I couldn't get from Oskaloosa to Des Moines because there's nobody in Oskaloosa who would do Uber. Go figure. 
I know, because that's my first thought, too, is like, oh, I'll just get an Uber. <laughs> Can't. Can't in Iowa, because nobody lives here. It's very boring here. So I, uh... <laughs> there aren't any taxis either. No, there's nothing. There's nothing. In Des Moines, yes, because Des Moines is a big town. But, like, in Oskaloosa, where I am, there's nothing. Just farms. There's just farms. Cornfields everywhere. I mean, you know, it's better than driving yourself if you're sick. I guess. A taxi. I don't know. <laughs> Just how can you trust something that's so yellow? <laughs> anyway. So I finally get to the right doctor's office, and they had me fill out all this paperwork. And I'm like, I'm right-handed. Like, I can't. I can't write because I'm right-handed and I'm shaky and I like got something to eat immediately because I was like so shaky and I was like trying to write with my left hand and it was just like chicken scratch like this all over the paper and I was just like oh my god I just need to be seen so I like get in the doctor's office and they take off my splint and it was just black my fingers were huge and black oh it was so gross because they were just like obviously broken and then the nurse is like all right, you know, we're going to take your vitals, and we're going to do this and that. And I was like, my blood pressure is going to be high. Just a P.S. <laughs> Chicken scratch drawn. <laughs> I was like, my blood pressure is going to be high, and it was. It was super duper high again. Um, I forget the number. I wasn't, couldn't really pay attention because I was still feeling, like, really woozy. And then uh, and the nurse joked and was like, ha, 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 hope you have someone taking care of you because you can't do anything with one hand. And I just started crying. I was like, we don't have anybody here. It's just me and Crusher. And she was like, oh, my God, okay. So she, like, gave me a hug, and then I cried even more. And I was just like, my mom's not with me. And, like, when you, like, I felt so sick. I was so, so sick. <laughs> I was so sick that I was just, I just couldn't keep it together. I was not feeling well, and my fingers hurt, and my neck still hurt, and, so then they were putting the cast on, and I was like, I'm really going to pass out. So they, like, they're like, okay, all right, just lay down. So they, like, I laid down, and they put an ice pack on your my neck, and it, like, I never had that happen, but it was really great. And actually made me not want to throw up anymore and pass out. And then I laid there for, like, half hour, an hour, and my blood pressure only went up. So they're like, okay, back to the ER. You can't, can't be like this. So back to the ER. They had one, like, in the same building, like, an urgent care ER in the building. So I went to that. And I was there for an hour or two. Blood pressure just kept raising up. And they were like, maybe you're having a bad reaction to the tramadol. I was like, oh, it could be. It's brand new. So no room service. It's the ER, not the hospital. I wasn't admitted. It was so bad. Plus, I couldn't eat because I was, like, thought I was going to throw up. So... That was really bad. But anyway, I got this cool cast. So cool. Why, when I just have two broken fingers, do I need to be wrapped up to my elbow? I'll never know. But you can, like, sort of see my fingers there. They're all gnarled up in there. But they were, like, give me all these color choices, and then they're like, oh, and we also have black. I was like, black, thank you very much. So I got my black cast, and... Finally, I think it was like seven, they let me leave. And I'd been there since three. So annoying. So then I had to like try and get home, right? And again, I'm like an hour and a half away. So get home. Dope robot arm. That's it. That's all I got to do. I can like draw with like a Sharpie on it, like all cool mechanical stuff. And just be like, I'm part robot. I'm really cool. Gray, what are you being for Halloween? Okay.
That's it? That's your costume? You just cut open a teddy bear? <laughs> cool. I can't wait to see a picture of it. <laughs> oh, you're so funny. So, so then they were like, okay, well, you probably will need surgery. Well, you might not. You may, you may not. But regardless, we can't do anything about it right now because your fingers are too swollen. So you have to go home and come back on Tuesday. Figure it out then. So today is now Sunday. So I have one more day. Um, I, I uh, broke my two fingers by falling off the loft of my... Well, I fell off the stairs holding crusher. I fell backwards off the stairs and broke my two fingers. So I'm waiting to hear if I need surgery um, Tuesday. I go for my appointment on Tuesday, see if I need surgery. So, and then, so, so that's really where the question lies then because, uh, oh no, it's okay. It's just tiny house life. You know what I mean? Stop. It's okay. People can tune in whenever they want. <laughs> um, so I'm conflicted because if I need to get, thank you so much. Oh, I appreciate that. I think so. I think it'll get better soon. I think, see, this doesn't immobilize enough. Like I thought it was going to be immobilized like a lot, but really it's not. It's like, uh, it's, you can still move them. You can still move them around in there. And I feel them moving sometimes when I move my arm and then like, I feel my finger twist and like, there's obviously something wrong in there. So I'm like, I feel like I actually might need surgery. I don't know. What do I know though? Right. I mean, whatever. But, um, so if I do need surgery, I want to know like how quickly I need surgery because it's one of those things where like, maybe I just come home. I'm glad you can move your fingers. <laughs> I wonder if I should just come home and get surgery. Um, because I mean, if I do end up having to get surgery, I'm going to need to not move literally at all. And I mean, I have to move now. I have to take care of my pet and myself and my house. I'm like, if I, I don't know. So hopefully I, uh, hopefully I don't need surgery because so pretty much, so I'm supposed to be in Texas this weekend. It's obviously not going to happen. So, um, I sort of have to figure out what's happening. Cause if, uh, really you're plugging on my live feed. It's okay. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. Cause if I don't need surgery and somebody get, <laughs> it's okay. It's fine. fine. <laughs> Um, if somebody can get my house hooked up for me, then I could probably drive, I could probably drive myself, um, to like the next stop on my tour, which would be Florida in the second week in November. <coughs> but if I, um, if I need surgery, obviously I'm not doing, um, I'm going to stop the festival tour. I have to stop. I mean, I guess. Um, I mean, if I need surgery ASAP and I have to be here, okay, fine. But like nothing, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. I'm a little bit worried. Um, because I, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen and I know it'll be fine. It always is fine. It always ends up being okay, but it's still scary. And, uh, it's really hard to do anything. I've had this morning. I cried a little bit, which I've, I've been trying to be like really, uh, brave about this whole thing, but I definitely was crying a little bit today because, you know, it's hard to get dressed. You can't really cook for yourself. I had to go buy a bunch of, uh, like disposable cookware. Wouldn't that be cool if I could? I don't know how I would do that, but I was thinking about that vlogging during the surgery or at least videotape some of it. It'd be really, really cool. I'll see about live streaming. We'll see what happens. Because it would be really, really cool. But who knows? Maybe I'll be home in time for then. I don't know. I don't know. But uh, maybe I won't even need it. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know. I've been trying to be brave, but it's just like... <laughs> You're crazy. 
Yeah, you're right. It does. It does. And so it is good to cry. But, you know, I sometimes just feel like a baby. Like, everybody breaks their fingers. Like, calm down. But, like, I don't know. It's the first time I broke anything. And it's just me and me and my pig. And I'm just trying to take care of her. And, you know, I can't cook for myself. You know, I had to go buy, like I said, disposable cookware. But then, like, you know, you can't have a sandwich because you need two hands for a sandwich. You can't wash dishes because you need two hands and you can't get your cats wet. And, you know... You can really only eat, like, soup and things you can, <laughs> things you can just, like, sort of eat with one hand, and then, you know, it's just hard. And then, you know, they're like, just relax, don't do anything. I don't know how to relax. I think most people from New Jersey don't know how to relax. Like, I just, I don't know how. I just get very, like, I can't just sit around. Like, today I tried to watch a movie, and then I was like, I can't take it. I gotta get out of the house. I gotta move around. I can't do it. And my neck was really hurting again, so I went to, uh, I went to, uh, um, sorry. My neck was hurting really bad, so I was trying to find acupuncture around me, um, and, uh, oh, ice cream. I can't have ice cream in my house because I don't have a freezer and I also don't have a microwave I only have a stove so that's limits your options a lot my refrigerator only works a little bit so it's really hard to prepare things people are like oh make sure you have a lot of vegetables I'm like cool and how do I wash and cut and chop them and do everything with them unless it's like bags of carrots that's all I can eat <laughs> like you know what I mean like it's really hard to like get your vegetables like today I tried to cut a tomato. It was not successful. I'm just going to say that. <laughs> it's just really hard. It's really hard to take care of yourself, and it's really hard to keep upbeat. And it's really hard to get a bra on. Really, really hard with one, one hand. <laughs> yeah, I'll just get one ice cream every day and eat it in one sitting. Yeah, okay. That's fair enough. That's actually what I'm doing right now. I got myself a milkshake now that I'm out. So. <laughs> Good call. That's what I will be doing. <laughs> and actually, the farm I'm on, um, Janelle, who um, who has the uh, whose house I'm I'm staying on, whose farm she um, she has a lot of goats and she makes goat milk ice cream and goat cheese, and it is so good. And I can have it whenever I want. It's crazy. So that's been cool. But like you know. Just trying to, like, do normal stuff as hard with one hand as it is. And then, you know, we're not sleeping in the loft anymore because I'm, like, I'm not risking that. No more loft for now. So, um, and, like, I, I could do it. Like, I could get up and down the stairs with my left hand. Like, it's not a big deal. I am a little worried about falling again. But, you know, I could be fine. But, like, she, Crusher has to sleep with me. She's very, very protective and dependent on me. And I am her. So, like, she has to be with me in the night. And if... If I were to sleep in the loft, I wouldn't bring her up because I'd just be afraid I couldn't get her down and, you know, she would just lose it if she couldn't sleep with me. So we're sleeping downstairs on the couch because the couch pulls out to a full-size bed. So that's where we're sleeping, but, like, having to pull that out every night and make that bed. And, like, I can't just leave it made as a bed because then it takes up the whole house. So then I have to, like, put it away every day and then try and walk around and try and keep it a little bit clean. And it just sucks. Like, I just need somebody here to, like, help me. And um, somebody <clears throat> had commented on one of my pictures, and they were like, can't you just come home? I'm like, I can't. Like, I can't just get on a plane. Like, this is my, my whole house is here. My pet is here. Everything's here. My car, my everything. I can't just pack a bag. Like, it's all my, my whole house is here. I can't just leave it. I got to get the whole thing back home. That's my home. I just want to get it back to my mom's home. So I... I am home. People are like, come home. And I'm like, I am home. This is my, I'm in my house. That's my home. It's just not in New Jersey where my mom is. Because if I was with my mom, she could take care of me. <laughs> You're nuts. You're a knucklehead. I miss you guys. Hmm. I'm going to hang out when I get home. For sure. And you guys can hang out with Crusher. Hopefully, 
I don't know. I sort of, I'm going to be really sad if I have to end this. Uh, I don't know who would. That was my, you know, if somebody could help me drive home, like maybe. Like, so my friend Renee, um, who I was supposed to meet in Texas this weekend, she might be able to. But, I mean, that's a lot to ask of somebody to, like, get in your truck and drive your house across the country. You know, like, it's a good three, four-day drive if you, like, drive a lot every day. And so it's a lot to ask for somebody to do. And then, you know, then they have to fly back and get back to their life. Like, it's a lot. So I don't know. I, I don't know. Something will work out. It always does. I think the more that I freak out about what's happening, the less that things get fixed. So I think if, as long as I stay calm, everything will get fixed. I mean, who knows? Maybe they'll be like, hey, you're, you're actually healing super quickly. You only need that cast on for one more week. And they'll be like, oh, my God, why did I freak out? There's no reason to freak out. Or they could be like, oh, we're having your surgery tomorrow, and you're going to get healed up, and that's what's going to that's what's gonna happen. So, What kind of money do you think I have? You think I have a lot of money? I don't. I'm a poor, broke girl on a, trying to tour the country on very little money, and it's not working. <laughs> I don't really have a lot of money to hand people. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little, but not very much. <laughs> I've spent a lot of it already. So. But anyway, it'll all be fine. It always is fine. <clears throat> I'm just excited to hear what they have to say. Oh, also, a benefit about coming home to New Jersey for surgery is because my insurance would cover it in New Jersey. And right now, all the doctor's visits, I am paying... Oh, my God. Hi, Katie. Mm, I miss you. I miss Circus Place. How would I find a person who needs a lift? Because that actually is a great idea. Is there like a website or just you mean like in just in general? Yeah, of course. Because I mean, I, it could be like I could drive. I mean, I drive with one hand, but I would need somebody to help with the rest of the um, rest of the truck. I know. I wish you could come get me too, Katie. You'd have so much fun with me. I can't wait for you to meet Crusher. So anyway, we'll see what happens. <clears throat> It'll all be fine. It always is. I'm just a little... I think emotionally I'm not going to be happy if I have to leave this tour. Because I didn't, like, finish it. But I've done so much, so... Crusher's a girl. Just as a PS, but it doesn't really matter. What's gender when you're a pig that's been fixed? <laughs> I don't even know you, Gray. You're too crazy. You're too crazy. But... Yeah. Don't be sorry. <laughs> so yeah, that's the situation. It's not a big deal. It's just, I don't know. I wanted to make it to Florida. I wanted to go to Texas. But I think Texas is pretty much out at this point altogether. Because I was going to leave last Friday, or like three days ago Friday, and go down through Missouri, down through Arkansas, and down to Texas. And I was going to hit, like, hot springs and a bunch of, like, abandoned places and weird museums. And nope, not going to happen. So, um, but like I said, there could be great news. I could get to the surgeon. He's like, oh, my God, your bones heal amazingly. You're doing great. Do nothing. Do awesome. Just stay there for another week and you should be fine. And, like, again, if somebody hooks up my house to my truck for me and, like, packs all my stuff for me, I could drive it. It's not that hard to drive with one hand. I do it. I mean, most people drive with one hand anyway. Nobody sits there like this all the time. That typically does not happen. So, I mean, I could do that, but I can't, like, set up my house. And, like, every night would be very stressful. 
to try and like it would be a really cool surgeon if he was like yeah everything's cool you're good awesome I mean I I want to say that surgeons don't want to just do jobs for money so that goes through my head too like I would want a second opinion but like I don't know anybody out here to be like oh I just need a second opinion first of all I don't have time second of all I don't know where I am and I can't afford it. And I'm just like, whatever. And it's your hands. And I'm so scared because my hand. And, like, my mom and I were talking about it. And I was like, I don't even want to admit it. <laughs> well, you know what? Mondays don't mean anything for me because I don't work. So Monday means I can sleep in. Oh, no. I have an acupuncture appointment tomorrow. And then I can sleep in. So. Sucks to be a kid. I'm just kidding. <laughs> It's going to stink when I get home and I have to go back to work. That's going to stink. But until then. Um, millennials, I mean, really. Oh, wait, no, you're not even a millennial. You're a Generation Z, right? You think? Gen Z? I don't remember. But, yeah. There's, like, this one spot I keep feeling on my hand, too, because I can't stop touching it, and my whole hand goes numb. Good boy. We're losing connection. No! No! Come on, very bad connection. Get to a better connection. You can do it. I believe in you. Why are you so bad at connecting? Crusher is at my tiny house. She is um, snuggled up in a blanket. I wish she was with me. I love her very much. Okay, it's a very bad connection. Oh, oh so bad. Okay. Well, I think that's going to be it. That's pretty much all I want to talk about anyway. So basically the future is unclear. I think I'm going to be live streaming more often than um, uploading videos because uh, I don't, um, this is my editing hand. So, I, Crusher has her on Instagram, Crusher the Mini Pig, at Crusher the Mini Pig. Check her out. I think I'm going to start writing children's stories about her. The adventures of a mini pig in a tiny house with an idiot owner. Yeah, I will. Thank you. I will absolutely do that. And I think I'm going to try and, like I said, live stream more often because I can't uh, can, um, edit, upload videos. I have, like, videos of, like, the farm crawl and, like, I went to all kinds of stuff and can't upload it yet. So I'll just do that. Thank you. Thanks for checking in. I appreciate it. So, yeah, we'll see what happens. I'll let you guys know. And thanks for tuning in today. Um feel free to check out my Instagram and Facebook for more up-to-date information. Um, tiny Hell on Wheels on Facebook and at Tiny underscore Hell underscore Wheels underscore, wait, Tiny Hell on Wheels with all underscores on Instagram and on Instagram at Crusher the Mini Pig for her Instagram. Um... And you can always donate money to me if you really feel like you need to at paypal.me slash tinyhellonwheels. Um, you can send money if you want. But other than that, that's it. I will keep you guys updated. Bye, guys. Thanks.